so what I what I've drawn here is the um, I guess it's the I don't know the side view of of this I beam here. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, yesterday we used a, a square for the cross section. I just want to show that the cross section is not necessarily a square; it can be any shape. And so for this one, the cross section here is. Uh, is an I beam, but when you look at it from the side, it could, it, it's just going to look like this. Right. And what's on the end here is like a plate. Mm -hmm. And in order to get pure bending, like um, the I beam has to be attached to the plate so that um, basically the, the force is distributed evenly across this entire part. It's not like just a, a pinpoint of force here. This, this part's pulling the beam out, and this part's pushing the beam in. Mm -hmm. And so there's a moment that's been applied, on, and moment's the same on both sides. And so you have your neutral axis going down the middle, and we're just going to take out any cross section. And no matter where you take the cross section in pure bending, um, the forces are going to be the same. Um, it's only based on its distance from the neutral axis. It's not based on its distance um, within the length of the beam. So that's why you can just focus on the cross section rather than the length of the beam. And, but um, it's just easier to visualize it like this first so you see what's going on. Um, basically, we're, we're, we're getting to the point where we can determine how much stress this beam can take. And that's the whole point of the whole structural mechanics class, basically. So, um, so we're trying to figure out how much stress is is in any particular point in this beam. Okay. And then this one right here. This is it's the same thing. This is just the end of the beam here. And we're focusing on this just so that you can see where the concept of moment comes from for here. Because basically, if there's a force being applied to the top and an equal force being applied to the bottom of the plate there. And what it's doing is it's going to compress the top to make it want to bend up. And then this is going to um, extend the bottom, which is also going to make it bend up. And that's what forms the moment. Because you can see that the moment equals the force, this force P times uh, the distance from the neutral axis. Is that okay? And um, like some of the stuff I'm not going to know, like uh, a very deep reason, but <laughs> um, so is maybe the professor Tucker. <laughs> So, so basically, um, what's happening with the with the moment here? You know, we're we're going to represent it with the force P at, at a distance y from the neutral axis, and that force is acting on a plate. So that makes that makes it so that there's a force here and a force here, and it's just getting less less and less. And so at the very middle, there's nothing, right? Um, because the neutral axis doesn't change. Like it stays the same length, therefore there can't be a force on it. But this change is a lot, so that means the compressive force is going to be the most, and this change is a lot, so it's going to be the most. And so going by this diagram here, we see that the moment right here, which is represented up here, is going to equal and if we take the moment from wherever we're looking for the force, say out here, um, actually the furthest out you'd, you'd go is you just follow this. But, um, it's going to be, say, any, any point from here to here is going to be negative y. So we're going to have our moment equal the force times the distance y away from the neutral axis. And then from there, we, 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 we can see that the moment is going to equal negative y times um, times
times the stress times the area. And that can be a little bit confusing, but um, going back to what was in, I think, in chapter one, between the, with the stress relationship and how stress is equal to the force divided by the area. And, and from this equation, that's, this is the, the whole point of, of why we were developing a stress versus distance from the neutral axis was so that we could get um, everything in terms of why. So since, if, if you remember, um, on Monday, we, we got a relationship for, for stress, which is, which is right here. And so we, we know that this is constant, the, the maximum stress over the maximum distance. And we wanted it to also be in this form for stress max because most of the time that's what we're interested in is the max stress. We want to know if this, if this beam is going to break. So we know that um, we know how much weight is going to be on that beam. So we know how much stress is going to be in it. Will it be able to withstand it? So, um, our max stress, we're usually, it's usually either given or we need to find that. And then our y max so is going to be a constant. So this is constant uh, times our distance from the neutral axis. And when, so I'm going to substitute this out for k, uh, the constant, just to make it a little bit, a little bit easier to follow. Then this right here, this, once you once you do the algebra, this comes out to a constant times y squared dA, and y squared dA um, is the integral of inertia. This is going to be. Um, uh, in moment of inertia about the x-axis. So this this whole thing, it, we're basically using inertia as a tool because um, usually for any of these beams, we're given what the inertia is. You could you could still calculate it using using this integral, mm -hmm. but generally they're just given. And you would have to um, use this integral or um, Memorize the whatever equations are for a square, for a rectangle, or for a triangle, or whatever size beam. Um, so probably for most purposes, you, you won't have to use this. But for now, we use it just so that you can see where our equation down here is going. So if we know that this integral, um, y squared dA equals equals i, then it's safe to say that. Our, our moment here is going to equal k times ix. You see that? Yeah. So that's <laughs> a pretty simple way to go about it. So now we have our moment equals and now I'm going to substitute back out the, um, the k just so you can see the whole thing. And now we have our stress max over our y max times our moment of inertia. And so if we're trying to solve for our stress max, which is usually what we're going to be interested in, our stress max is going to 